Hey, 4xE fans, great question of the day, and I wish I could get the person credit that asked it, but I can't find the comment now. Uh, things just get buried, and it's hard to go in and find things, but uh, I don't know, last week or earlier this week, I don't know, everything's running together right now. Somebody asked a question, uh, and it was on another video that I had, and I can't remember which video, but um, it, they were asking the question, why is eSave in charge mode on the uh, Wrangler 4xE, why it, well, in the Grand Cherokee 4xE as, as well, why is it less efficient than just running the vehicle in hybrid mode? And it's a great question, and it, it, it gets involved with some thermodynamics. Uh, one of the rules of, uh, laws of thermodynamics is that we don't create energy, we only convert energy from one form to another. So you have to understand that first and foremost. One of the questions that gets asked a lot in a lot of, you, you see it all over social media, people ask, why don't they just put an alternator on one of the wheels of an electric vehicle and just charge as it's going? So, okay, one of the concepts that is an impossibility is what's called perpetual motion. There is no such thing as perpetual motion. People have worked for hundreds of years to try to create a scenario where perpetual motion is possible, and it just, it, you just can't do it. It doesn't happen. It's, it's, it's illegal uh, with the laws of physics and thermodynamics and all that stuff. It just can't happen. So putting an alternator on the axle or the wheel of an EV just doesn't pan out. One of the reasons why is the internal resistance of that alternator. A uh, little backstory, I had a 95 Jeep Wrangler and I had a light bar on top and I had lights on the bumper. I like lights before lockers, that's kind of my MO. And if you see my current Jeep, it's that way too. I just like lights and um, I like buttons that push and light things happen. It's just one of my favorites in life. But um, with my old 95 Wrangler, of course, this is pre-LED days when the lights were take a lot more power than what they did. And my brother and I were out in the driveway one day and I turned on like all the lights at once and you could hear the load to the engine because the alternator took the load and you could just hear that subtle little dip in the RPMs. And uh, he said, he said, I think you've about maxed out your lights. I said, I said, no, when I can stall the engine, that's when I'll know I have enough lights. So, and that's why you, if you have like an ambulance, you have to have a bigger alternator because you have to have more power availability to, and, and of course with that, if you're taking more power, you're consuming more energy from somewhere. That energy has to come from somewhere. And when we get back to, after I've climbed out on this tree branch, we get back to why eSave is less efficient than just running in hybrid mode. Even if you have, uh, there's two modes to eSave. There's battery charge and battery save, of course. Battery charge, it makes sense because we're asking the vehicle to do more than just drive it down the road. We're asking it to take some of the energy that is created and divert it into putting energy in the battery. Imagine uh, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s and you had a bicycle with pegs on the back and you were riding to a friend's house and then you were going to go somewhere else after you picked up that friend. And that friend stood on the pegs on the back and rode down the road, right? Now, you are the same person pedaling and the same two wheels are on the ground, but you've just added the weight of your friend on the back of the bike. Everything else about the scenario is the same, except for you're increasing the load on the bike. And you soon found out it makes you tired to ride when you've added the weight of that friend on the back. Even though you have the same two tires on the ground, the same two feet on the pedals, it is harder to pedal because it requires more energy. Same could be said with the Wrangler 4xE when, and the Grand Cherokee 4xE. When we ask it to not only propel the vehicle down the road, but also charge the battery, that extra energy has to come from somewhere. It's not free. If you, uh, if you had the ability to, um, like if you manually, like I've got one of these little devices at the house that you can uh, pedal and it's a little 120 volt generator, right? Just a little thing if, for emergencies. And if you're pedaling that thing without anything plugged into it, it pedals real free. There's no resistance or anything. 
but as soon as soon as you plug something in you start getting that resistance and uh, that's why it takes more energy and it takes more gas because that energy that is the energy source we are using when we're using eSafe that is the energy source that we're drawing from and we're drawing more from to put then that excess energy in the battery and if you watch some of my other videos um, you know I've tried experiment after experiment and eSave always 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 lowers your gas mileage even in battery save mode unless and, and I haven't done this experiment yet I want to do the experiment where I hit battery save when it's at like one percent just see if it really makes a difference at that point I haven't done that yet but if you're at a higher percentage you're not allowing that that battery charge there's a there's a charge cycle a charge rate to any battery and you're not allowing that battery to be down in the lower 15 percent of uh, the state of charge where it's easier on the vehicle it doesn't demand as much as from an energy span standpoint to maintain that battery at a certain point so I hope that all makes sense. I get a little climbing out on a few tree branches on that, but uh, sometimes you got to talk about the extra stuff to understand the main thing. So there we go. Thanks for watching, and thanks to whoever asked that question. I'm sorry I can't find it and give you credit. Take care.